Two years ago, I got my Rescue Greyhound Malibu. This is me documenting the process that I went through to get my Greyhound. So when I first started looking into getting a Greyhound, I did a lot of research. I looked at how to get one, how it works, the whole process. Um, but I realized my biggest obstacle was going to be my dad. My dad um, hadn't had a dog since he was like 10, 10 years old. So it took me two and a half years of convincing my dad that Greyhounds are amazing, which now he is completely on board. It took me about two years of budgeting and planning and making like, look, this is how much I'm going to make in a month with my job. This is how much um, Malibu stuff is going to cost. This is how much I'm going to be able to put away in a savings account, etc. Um, it took a lot of like planning and like showing them, look, I can do it. I don't need you to help me doing it. I can pay for my dog. I can pay for any vet bills that may mysteriously pop up. And I finally got him to say yes in 2018 when we moved into the apartment that I'm in now. Um, and so I got my dad involved in the adoption process and I went through Greyhound Pets of America, Minnesota. And they are wonderful, great, amazing human beings because they help people like me get greyhounds and greyhounds are amazing they're wonderful fantastic dogs they're adorable in pajamas they're like toddlers and i'll get to that later in a later video but um the application process kind of starts with first you apply and i first applied in 20 april 2017 um, to get Malibu, to get a, a Greyhound at the time. And I had to take back my application because we were moving to the apartment I'm in now. And so I had to like take it back because I wasn't quite sure, um, how it was all working. And then I reapplied again a year later. Um, and they were initially hesitant because I use Malibu, use Malibu as my emotional support animal. She, bless her soul, bless her silly, silly soul, um, she is my emotional support animal for my severe anxiety and depression. And she does a great job. Um, but as she is a retired racer, she did have a job, she did have a career, she is now in full retirement. They were obviously a little hesitant to give me a greyhound because they're like well we don't want you taking it everywhere and i'm like i'm not about to take a giant dog with me everywhere granted i was not aware of how big malibu was gonna be um but anyway i had my adoption interview in probably late april of 2018 somewhere in there um and our adoption agent was fantastic he sat on the phone with us for about two and a half, three hours, and we talked all about greyhounds, about what we need to know, what we need to prepare for. Um, during the adoption interview, they did ask specific questions like, how often are you gonna be home? Is anyone going to be home a lot? Is she gonna be, is he or she gonna be in the kennel a lot? Um, have you had dogs before? Have you had greyhounds before? Um, which no, this is my first greyhound, never had a greyhound before. I have no, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, um, but I was super excited. At the end of the interview, they said, um, the next round of dogs, they will hopefully be able to give me one. They're not quite sure because they had a lot of, um, applications because April is Adopt a Greyhound month. And so they were, they had a lot of applications. So I waited another three months until July. July came, I was at work. And uh, I was on break and I got an email from my adoption agent saying, we found a greyhound for you. And I lost my shit. I started crying. I was in tears. I couldn't get full sentences out. It was like a five-year-old talking. I was just so excited because that meant I finally had my ESA. Now, what <laughs> naive me didn't quite remember was that this is a rescue dog, so they're not quite comfortable with you 100% right away. But I'll get to that in a later video. Um, 
they told me um, on July 17th, 2018, that I would be getting Malibu. A little two-year-old red fawn greyhound with a lot of spunk, a lot of food motivation, and a lot of counter surfing. Oh, and she loved to follow you around. Uh, Malibu's foster parents told me via a message that um, she was very sweet, very loving, and um, she does not like small children. They scare the living crap out of her. They still do that today. She's still not quite sure about small, tiny humans. Um, but, and that she was not small dog friendly at all. And that she was um, not cat friendly either. Well, I don't have a cat. I don't have any kids and I don't have any small dogs. So I was like, all right, I don't care. I was super excited and I was like, okay, when do I get my dog? Well, she still had to go through her vet process, which was to get spayed, get her, her nails trimmed, her teeth done, last final blood workup, and her microchip put in. During the vet records from the track, they did find that Malibu had a small heart murmur, which is why she was retired so early at the age of two. A um, couple more weeks passed by, and on August 10th, uh, Malibu showed up at my front door obviously with my adoption, with the adoption people. Um, and she was like, yep, this is my house. And in the first 30 seconds, I think she peed on our rug um, in our kitchen. And I was like, oh, okay, time to go outside. Um, and that was a whirlwind trying to like, okay, how are you gonna tell us that you need to go out? Um, but as we were signing the paperwork uh, to, say, hey, you're our dog now. Um, she had her head sitting on my arm while we were sitting at the table, which was very sweet. Um, and she just laid down on the floor. That was her That was her spot, that was her place. She got to explore the entire apartment. She loved it, she was just super excited. She wasn't quite sure what a dog bed was. It kind of freaked her out because of how fluffy it was. Um, but it was great. She was ours from then on. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I prepped to getting Malibu, um, some of the stuff I got, um, definitely recommending supplies, stuff like that. Um, so when I was prepping for Malibu, I was actually prepping for a male dog. Um, I was preferring a male because I was told that they tended to be a little more affectionate, they tended to be a little more calm. I got a wily affectionate female. <laughs> um, and so I bought a, the biggest kennel I could find. It is a 42 inch by 36 by 20 something, like 36 by 36 by 42. I don't know, it's huge. I can fit inside it comfortably. And I'm five foot seven, so. Um, I bought beds, I bought, well I bought a bed, I bought crate mats, multiple, so I could change them out if she ever went peed on accident in there. I bought treats, I bought food, because I didn't know what kind of food she was on, so I bought something that was for like a sensitive stomach, which she's still on today. Um, and I got so many things. I got toys, I got so many rope toys, she can't use those because she tries to eat the strings. Um, I got squeaky toys, I got toys that squeaked but didn't make sound, but she could hear it. I got Kong's galore. Um, because those are her favorite thing ever. The minute we pull them out of the freezer, she just knows it's kennel time. I get to have my own time. Um, and I bought all of my stuff off of Chewy. Um, this ad, this is not sponsored by any means. Chewy has not sponsored me. Chewy has not said, hey, make some great review about us, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna do it for free because I love Chewy. Chewy is fantastic. They are amazing. They have great shipping. And if you ever have anything that doesn't go right or something's like, oh my gosh, I didn't get this for my order. Or, oh my gosh, I need to return this. They are so good about it. I bought sweaters for Malibu thinking, oh, it's going to be cold out. These will fit her. You can't buy anything on Chewy that'll fit a greyhound. Sadly. Come on, Chewy. Step it up. But um, so what I ended up doing was just messaging them. They were like, oh yeah, just donate it to your local shelter and we will give you your money back. And I was like, okay. So I donated the sweaters to a local shelter and that was really cool that I could just be like, hey, here's some sweaters for your dogs. One of them got on a D-Dog sweater, so they're living the high life. 
Um, but I get my food, I get her food, her, um, all of her toys and her treats and her teeth cleaning nonsense, her dentist sticks, her, um, Kong toys, all of it. I get everything on Chewy. The only thing I don't get on Chewy is medication because it's super easy for me to just go to my vets in town once a month. They give me <laughs> the meds. I give them to her right there and they were <laughs> dandy goody fine and good to go. Vomiting, it's fine. But I do want to recommend some books that the adoption agent, the adoption agency told me to buy and read, which were Retired Racers for Dummies. Oh my god, I don't know. Which, which I have here. Retired Racers for Dummies. Retired Racing Greyhounds for Dummies. It's a great book. And then also Adopting the Racing Greyhound, which I have on my iPad. Um, and they are so helpful for understanding the psyche of greyhounds and understanding why they're kind of weird for the first, like, six to nine months being in your house. Um, they don't know what dog things are. They don't really understand a lot of dog processes. But um, if you do end up getting a greyhound, 100% recommend. They're the greatest dogs on the planet, but what dog isn't great? There are no dogs that aren't great. So, um... This, this was my process of getting Malibu, the process of going through the adoption agents who were so great and so wonderful. And now I have my emotional support animal, retired racer greyhound, Malibu.